My immediate reaction to the trade was, I don't get it. And I do think that they are getting worse in the short term. But I do want to pause for a moment. You got 48 hours until the trade deadline, right? And you got people, I don't know why, basically jumping off of cliffs right here. And I want to consult one of my good friends, um, Riggs, from a movie called Lethal Weapon, to help me out here. He's got a message for you. I'm jumping! Do you really want to jump? Do you really want to jump because of a move like this? And I ask that not just to you listening, upset about this trade. I ask this to everybody in the clubhouse. Step back from that ledge. You are living a bit of a lie right now, let's be honest, right? I mean, the run differential is something that we haven't seen for a team with this many wins since 1901, at least, if not further back. So, I mean, we might be talking about, like, the 1800s. Where everyone's got mustaches and baggy pants and disgusting teeth. From a rational, pragmatic baseball perspective, let's just walk through this, okay? This guy pitched his way into a raise in the last year of his contract. Do you want to let that guy walk? Because I doubt you sign him. Relievers are so hard to predict year to year. Do you want to let that guy walk and get nothing in return for him? A couple of weeks ago, weren't we at least of the idea that this is somebody that the Mariners might trade? Yeah, that's the answer. Yes. That was something that we were thinking about. All of a sudden, they're playing really well. They've been playing well against good teams, too. And maybe, just maybe, there's a chance that they compete in the playoffs. And I do think that there is some element of, hey, you got to make sure that the guys in the clubhouse are feeling like they have every single resource available to them. Right now, it does not feel like they necessarily have that. I don't know what to make of Abraham Toro. I think he is a slight upgrade for your infield. Joe Smith, uh, yeah. Tyler Anderson is somebody that gives you a better fifth starter. Kendall Graveman is better than those two guys combined. To you, in 2021. No doubt about it. And losing him is somewhat of a middle finger to that clubhouse. But they got to get over it. This is the first of many departures that we are going to see for this Mariners team in the coming years. And I know, it stinks. It stinks for Kyle Seeger, who's been here forever and now feels like all of a sudden the balloon is being popped. Or Mitch Hanniger, who you would like to see stay here. This is probably a strike against keeping him long-term after the end of his contract, after his last year of his contract this coming season. So definitely lots of things to look at right now and to be skeptical of. And I'm not telling you to not be. But if trading Kendall Graveman is going to end the Mariners' season, this team was never that good to begin with. And they got to get over it. This is sports. It stinks. I wish it were a little bit more human. But it's not just sports. This is the real world, right? I mean, twice in my radio career, I have done a show within minutes of being told that my co-host was fired and that my producer was fired. I cried like a baby the second time around. It, it was a blubbering mess. It was awful. But you got to... Keep going. And this is on Scott's service. This is on the Mariners Clubhouse to keep going. Yeah, it's a minor setback right now, and it stinks that he's going to the Houston Astros. But I do not think this is the world-ending trade that a lot of people are portraying it to be, and I think a lot of that reaction just comes from the, the high that we were riding Monday night and the extreme low that came right afterwards. It's like a trip in Vegas at the very end on the plane ride home. But you can get through it, and you move on. It stinks, no doubt about it.